morning and welcome to Ted Ross Ministries for January 28th, 2024. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Our first reading for this Sunday is taken from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 18, reading verses 15 to 20. The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet, like me from among your own people. You shall heed such a prophet. This is what you requested of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly when you said, If I hear the voice of the Lord my God any more, or ever see again see this great fire, I will die. Then the Lord replied to me, They are right in what they have said. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their own people. I will put my words in the mouth of this prophet, who shall speak to them everything that I command. Anyone who does not heed the words that the prophet shall speak in my name, I myself will hold accountable. But any prophet who speaks in the name of other gods, or presumes to speak in my name a word that I have not commanded the prophet to speak, that prophet shall die. Who ends the first reading? Second reading, our gospel lesson, is taken from Mark chapter 1, reading verses 21 to 28. They went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, Jesus entered the synagogue and taught. They were astonished at his teaching, for Jesus taught them as one having authority, and not as the scribes. Just then there was in the synagogue a man with an unclean spirit. And the man cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked the man, saying, Be silent, and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, convulsing him and crying with a loud voice, came out of him. And they were all amazed, and they kept on asking one another, What is this, a new teaching? With authority. Jesus commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. And so at once his fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. Here ends the Gospel reading. Our first song is Rise, Shine, You People. Please sing along with me.
Friends, our first Bible reading for this Sunday is from Deuteronomy chapter 18, 15 to 20. I just read it for you. You might want to take a Bible out if you have one handy at home, wherever you are. It's a very interesting reading. Moses and his people, the Israelites, have been through so many things together when you think about all their history and wanderings in the wilderness. Moses led his people out of slavery, parting the Red Sea to help them escape from the Egyptians. Through Moses, the Israelites experienced God's central act, the deliverance from slavery in Egypt. Moses also passed on God's instruction on how to celebrate that deliverance in that very special meal called the Passover. This is a sacred meal partaken with everyone fully ready to take the journey of salvation. In addition to all these things, Moses is also, of course, the lawgiver in the Old Testament. So what does Moses teach us today in this first reading? I believe he teaches us many things but I only want to talk about one thing today. When Moses led his people, they would often complain and murmur about their situation, as people still do today. But what amazes me is how Moses remained focused. He remained focused, loyal and faithful to God in this long and hard journey in the wilderness for 40 years. So what does that mean for us? Well, I believe we need focus also. If we're gonna accomplish anything positive in our personal, family, or congregational lives, can we remain focused on our mission and top goals despite the problems, the barriers, and the temptations that we face in 2024. I believe we can learn four valuable things in the life, witness, and focus of Moses, the great prophet and lawgiver. My first point is simply be in God's perfect will. Be in God's perfect will. The Christian tries to live and be in God's perfect will. In the Lord's Prayer, you recall, Jesus taught us to pray, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. We find this in Luke 6, verse 10. You remember the words of Martin Luther in the small catechism about following God's will. Luther says, The good and gracious will of God is surely done without our prayer, but we ask in this prayer, that it may be done among us. When does this happen? God's will is done when he hinders and defeats every evil scheme and purpose of the devil, the world, and our own sinful self, which would prevent us from keeping his name holy and would oppose the coming of his kingdom. And God's will is done when he strengthens our faith and keeps us firm in his word as long as we live. This is God's good and gracious will. We often want to do things our way, which may not be God's way. There are many times when we're entangled with the busyness of life and we forget how much God loves us and how much God provides for us every day. We give ourselves too much credit and don't give enough credit to our Creator God. We forget what God is calling us to be and to do in our families, at work, or in our church's mission. We take for granted all the good things that God is doing in the seasons of our lives. You know that God is in the business of drawing people to Himself and this is our mission too. This is why we baptize and teach and make disciples. Christians like us allow God to lead our paths. We will never be sorry or miss out. 
We are following God's good and gracious will. Romans 12, 2 says, God's will is perfect and pleasing and good. My second point today I want to share with you is to cultivate a personal relationship with God. Moses reminds us how vital this is. Moses and God in the Old Testament seem to talk together every day. God loves us. God desires that we have a very personal and fulfilling relationship with him, just like Moses did. Moses and God were close. They talked every day. Sometimes they disagreed and argued, but they talked, they communicated. And this is a must for us as well. Point number three. God loves the weak and uses the weak. When we read and study the Holy Scriptures, we see how God used many people who initially felt unworthy. I hear this a lot in the church. I'm not worthy. Can't you get somebody else to be on church council? I don't know if I could do that. Well, look at the Bible. God used Moses, who had an issue with his speech. God used Mary, who was so young and fearful at first. God used Jeremiah, who also thought he was too young and wanted God to find someone else to be his prophet. God used Sarah, who thought she was too old. God used Paul, formerly a persecutor of Christians, to preach the very gospel that he was against. And God used Ruth, who lost her husband and was living in a foreign land. But God used all these people and many others in the Bible to do positive and wonderful things for the church or for the people of God in Israel. God is not limited to who or what he can use to advance his kingdom and build up his church. So point number three is very clear. We need to be available. God loves the weak and uses the weak. There are times we need to leave our comfort zones in order to do God's work. Point number four, my last point, is stay focused on keeping the Christian faith and sharing the Christian faith. When Moses led his people, they would often complain about their long and hard journey, just like we complain about things we don't like today. Amazingly, Moses remained focused, loyal, and faithful in this 40-year marathon through the wilderness. The vital question today is, what about us? What about us? Can we stay focused on our mission as well? Will we remain focused on loving God in 2024? We will choose to remain focused. Will we, will we choose to remain focused despite the problems, the barriers and temptations that we face as individuals and as we face as a congregation? Deuteronomy 18, 15 to 20 is one part of a larger discourse in Deuteronomy. It's an updating of the law for the Israelite community as the people wait to enter the promised land. Here Moses assures the people that God will continue to guide them through new prophets and leaders who will faithfully proclaim the divine word of God. Where we work or where we go to church, in our country with politicians and so forth, change of leadership is very hard. It's hard in Bible times. It's hard for us today. Transition is an uncomfortable in-between time. Most of us like our routines. If we like our teacher, our coach, or pastor, or president, we don't like it when they leave. Grief over the loss of a beloved leader is real and must be recognized and dealt with in a healthy way. 
missing a leader and friend, a change of routine, not knowing what the new life will look like, can shake confidence in the future. This is the situation in our text, and this is the situation in many of our congregations, or with many of you, as you transition from work to retirement, or take a new job, or move to a new place, or try to adjust to a loss, or other big change in your life. Grief over the loss of a beloved leader is real and must be recognized and dealt with in a healthy way. Yes, missing a leader and friend, a change of routine, not knowing what the new life will look like, can shake confidence in the future. This is a situation in our text in Deuteronomy, and this is a situation in many of our congregations and in many of our lives. But God loves Moses, and God loves the Israelites, and God loves you and me. God has a bright future for us, no matter what the challenges are. God will raise up faithful leaders in each new time. So trusting the promise of the good Lord to provide for us, we can move forward into the new chapter of our lives with confidence, hope, and enthusiasm. Focus. Focus is the good news today. Keep your focus positive, hopeful, biblical, and Christian. Keep your focus on God, like Moses did. For the God we worship and serve can do anything. Let us pray. Calling and dynamic God, lead us all today in hope and joy to new relationships, new chapters of life and mission, and new victories for Christ and his church. Amen. Our next song is I Want to Walk as a Child in the Light. It's a great song, The Epiphany Season.
Please pray with me. Today, each petition will end with the words, let us pray and your responses have mercy, O oh God. Confident that God our light and our salvation hears us when we pray, let us now offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all people in need. For those who speak your word throughout the church and the world, O oh God, and for educational institutions that prepare leaders, that you will lift up prophets in our congregations, let us pray in response, have mercy, O oh God. For the works of God revealed in and through creation, for an end to pollution and unjust use of natural resources, and for good weather this season, let us pray, have mercy, O oh God. We pray for peace, especially in the Bible lands and in Ukraine. We pray for justice throughout the world, for political leaders at all levels, and for those who provide public services, that you will grant them wisdom as they carry out their tasks. Let us pray, have mercy, O oh God. We pray for the homeless, the unemployed, the underemployed, and their advocates. We pray for the sick, especially those we name aloud or silently at this time. We pray for anyone suffering. We pray for their caregivers and for the weak in body, mind, and spirit. Let your compassion be felt by all in need. Let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God. For those in our congregation celebrating special events, for those missing from worship today, and for friends and family both near and far, let us pray, have mercy, O oh God. In thanksgiving for the faithful departed, including precious loved ones in your life and my life, who witnessed your love and their lives in this world, that through them, our own faith will grow stronger. Let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God. Merciful God, you hear our prayers even before we speak them. Receive them for the sake of the one through whom you revealed your goodness, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who taught us to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our last song is Softly and Tenderly, Jesus is Calling. Won't you sing with me, friends? Oh, 
morning for you and for me. Join me next week. Another positive message on God's Word. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.